Always a 4-H member writes, Have you ever combined themed and non-themed products on a page? I'm working on many Christmas pages, and I'm using non-themed papers with some themed embellishments. Does anyone else do that? Glitter Girl, can you help Always a 4-H member find a useful theme in all this? Of course I can. This week, we'll start by looking at a few sample albums to get an idea of different options for using themed products. This first album, it's a wedding album, and this is an option to not theme. So I'm starting at the beginning of this book, and I'm just going to flip through the pages. Keep in mind that the supplies you'll see here are slightly older because this is a 2008 wedding. So you'll see um, products that aren't still available. But what you will see is that there's not a lot of themed products. So there's very, very little in things that came in packages dedicated to wedding supplies. You'll see more theme in the color where um, the colors of the wedding are brought through onto the pages. You'll see things like florals, chandeliers, a lot of um, love words, some flowers, some butterflies, a lot of hearts. But I think there's only two things in the entire album that actually were printed with either wedding or bride. So very much supplies that are not themed and just general choosing. Now there's one of the, the wedding themed bits, one that says our wedding day. Um, but throughout the album, what I think worked best here is that it meant I could get as much from my supplies as possible if I'd bought lots and lots of wedding stash that was specifically for a wedding. And then whatever I didn't use in the wedding album would be left over and I didn't, I wouldn't have anywhere else to use it. So instead of this page where I could have used really thematic things like cupcakes or books, I just went with general things for the day. And this way, I have a collection of supplies that are really versatile and they can be used for anything. So I didn't get to the end of this album and think that all the other supplies I'd bought were a waste. So because I just didn't buy a lot of supplies that said wedding or, or bride or anything like that. So instead, the theme goes through with colors, with motifs, and I, I still think it looks like a wedding album, even though it doesn't have lots of um, stereotypical wedding objects on the page. A few of these pages you may recognize if you've seen the 4 by 6 photo love class, so that one that folds out is something that was from that class, and a few others have, have been projects here at Two Piece. So that's one option. Another option is to use theme supplies, but when it's not already obvious. So for example, this opening page, this is a travel album to Hawaii. All these pictures with parrots, there are plenty of tropical parrot embellishments out there in the scrapbooking world that I could add to that page, but I didn't. Here's a few smaller themed things, the little travel words and, and things that look like tickets. And then the page on the right has waves and palm trees, so perhaps a little bit more themed. But in general, the themed embellishments are small, like these little postage stamps, or there'll be things that are a bit less obvious, like the compass mixed in with the greenery there. This is probably the most themed embellishment on any of the pages. So lots of sandcastles and anchors and beach themed things. And then the one on the right uses themed things, but for a completely different style. It was just giving something to try. So I used Valentine's Day type things for just a general love page. But here's an option where I could have used surfboard embellishments because they're there in the photos. But to me, that's why when it's too obvious. So I don't use a, um, a surfboard embellishment on the, the page where there are plenty of surfboards. Just trying to choose the places where I'm not duplicating what's in the photo. I also think that sometimes if you use too many themed embellishments that are too big, it's really easy to not leave yourself any room left to write any stories, to write any journaling. And by keeping my themed embellishments small, I tend to still have plenty of room on my page. So I can still include the photos I want and, um, and I'm not relying on just duplicating the images that are already there in my photographs. So I don't tend to, um, to take something and, 
and get an embellishment that's just like what's in the picture. So when I travel to Paris, I don't really go out and buy an Eiffel Tower die cut or an Eiffel Tower piece of paper, for example. And, and the, it's certainly a way that you can scrapbook. It's just not what um, works for for my style. Here's something like this is a camera on a page about setting up a funny self-portrait. And that's about as themed as I get. A little sunshine behind a title that says sunshine. Um, but they're, they're small embellishments. They don't overwhelm the page. So here there is a surfboard in the embellishment, but it's not there in the photo, for example. So just trying to... Um, to layer things up, make the themed embellishments not quite as obvious, and not put them on every single page. So that works and um, still makes for having a bit of themed embellishment without having that worry that you buy all these different themed things and then you're not sure which ones will get used and which ones will, will be left over and a bit of a wasted investment. So plenty of supplies that could be for absolutely any topic, polka dots, grids, butterflies, <laughs> anything that, um, that doesn't have a specific theme to it already. So here is some these are themed with the, the crazy road in San Francisco with their little road signs, but the themed element of the page is very, very small and it's all there in one little spot on the page. I didn't include cars or, or roads or anything in, in the pages about that particular location. So those are two different ways to look at it. And now I'm gonna take you through a layout and with a third option, and that's choosing supplies that are themed but not using them for the theme that you might expect. So here are the photos I'm going to be using, and they're from an animal sanctuary in Australia, so they have kangaroos and things like that. And I'm going to be using um, different things, some Valentine's things, so a tag that's brand new in the store from Amy Tangerine, some pebbles, clear stamps, possibly this tape from KI Memories, which is also... Um, was just letting you see the pattern there. It's also in a Valentine set, but it's kind of a lace pattern. Some autumn themed stickers from Bella, Vol Bella Boulevard. These good times um, 50s style stickers from Echo Park. This school themed sticker sheet from Basic Gray, that's the Oxford collection. And in the pattern papers, I'm using two autumn themed pattern papers, one from American Crafts called Starry Night, and one from the Studio Calico Autumn Press collection. Now, the first thing I tend to do with those papers is look at the B-sides. One side of a themed paper will usually be themed, but the other side may have a smaller, less obvious, um, obvious design that doesn't shout one theme or another. So I'll be using those. So I'm going to start by adhering the photos. I'm using three 4 by 6 photos that I'm going to have in a line across the center of the page. And the middle picture I want to separate just slightly. So I'm going to start with the B side on the Studio Calico paper and mat this so it has an orange frame. And then I'll just layer that over the top and put that in the middle. I'm also going to be adding some brown ink to all the edges of the different papers that I use in this project. And I'm using Vintage Photo Distressed Ink with the ink um, applicator tool. You can use any brown ink that you like, and you can leave ink out entirely. If you've watched other videos, you'll know that's just um, one of the steps in my process. So I'll add that one to the middle, and then I want to start adding some borders to either side of the photos. So I'm going to cut some plain strips, and I'm going to punch some decorated strips. And I wanted to show you this new border punch. It's Jenny Boland for Fiskars, and it's called Tickets, Please. And there's been a little bit of discussion about this punch in particular on the, the general scrapping board. Basically, if you want to make the tickets be tickets on both sides, you want to use it as a, a strip of tickets rather than just a border, you want to cut your paper to a really obscure size. It's right between 7 eighths and 15 sixteenths on, of an inch on the ruler. I've looked at all different ways trying to find if there's some way that that becomes a round number. It's about 23 millimeters, so it's not even that it's metric. Um, but if you cut that, then you can punch one side, turn it over, and line up the spaces in the, in the tickets, punch the whole strip again, 
and then you'll have a strip that has just the tickets, no straight edge. Um, so, so that's the size. It's just larger than 7 eighths of an inch. And then just use the guides to line up the pictures. So I'm going to start with that orange B-side paper in just wide strips. And then I'm going to add the tickets over the top. And I'll do that with, um, on the bottom I'm just going to use a tiny little bit so it just shows the one punched edge. And then I have that whole ticket piece. I'll add to the top and I'm going to add that with foam squares so it has a bit of dimension. But I also wanted some other colors in here so it's not just orange and yellow. So I'm going to pull this green border sticker from the basic gray sheet. It's not quite 12 inches long but that's okay because I'm going to add some embellishment over that little spot that's empty. So I'll add the foam squares and put this over the top. Now, having a look at this 50s sheet, which is a bit of a challenge, I found what I want on there, but I'm going to wait a minute to add it, and I'm going to go to this Studio Calico Fabrips. And what these are, are fabric strips with an adhesive backing, and they tear. So there are different little cuts at the top, or you can add one to get the right width that you want. And then you just rip the whole strip, and it has this lovely little frayed texture when you do that. And then you can just adhere it like a border sticker or a, or a length of tape to your page. So those come in all different colors and patterns, by the way. So you can have a look, and a couple of them are on sale at the moment, if you're watching this this week. And then I'm going to add the tag. The tag is going to become my, uh, like, one word in the title. So I'm going to add some thickers B4. So they spell out the beginning of the title and then some afterward. And these thickers are from the Garden Cafe collection. They're, um, and they're, they're glittery. They come in a few different colors. What I really like about them is that they have different styles for some of the letters. So that curly cued H that I added there, there's also a plain H for when that doesn't really work in your letter. There's a few different, or in your word, there's a few different letters like that. And then this brown alphabet is called Sunset. Um, just to bring the colors together. So I have the pink, but also the brown to pick up on the craft and, and tie that together a bit. But I want to add some pink to that top corner. So this sticker is from that 50th sheet. And I'm going to cut off the edge and then add it to the other corner. So whenever I'm adding one element to one side, I'm going to add it somewhere else diagonal on the page. So a little bit of pink in the top left, a little bit of pink in the bottom right. Then we're going to go to something that's not particularly themed, just um, some label stickers. I'm going to add a yellow label sticker at the top left, so I'm also going to add one at the bottom right. It's just take a little bit of readjusting of my letter stickers and things like that, but that's just part of how I scrapbook. So you might um, be far better at forward planning and not have that problem. Now I head over to the autumn themed stickers from Bella Boulevard. And I'm going to add a few of these in this little grouping at the top right. And then also some word stickers from the October afternoon sheet. Now, where I wanted to, where I added the, the orange fabric at the, top, fabric at the top of the page, I also want to add something with that at the bottom of the page. But I wanted it to be something a bit more embellishment-like rather than just a strip. So what I'm going to do is take a strip and one of these giant glue dots, which are called gloobers from Cosmo Cricut, and um, I'll try and make it so you can see them. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it. It's clear, and it's on a clear backing, but basically it's like a really big but flat glue dot. And then what I'm going to do is fold the fabric strip in half, so this is feathered on, or frayed on both edges, and then just twist and press in a circle to make a flower. And I tend to fold half of the strip, when I'm folding it in half, I only fold half the strip, and then as I go, I have a little bit more freedom to crinkle it more or less as the, the circle gets bigger. Um, it's just something to do a little trial and error. And then I take the backing off, and any of the glue that's wider than the flower can just be tucked underneath, and then just stick it onto the layout because the glue is already there and it will stay very well. So that brings the, the orange from the top to the bottom, and then I wanted to bring that green from the top down to the flower as well, so I used the leaves off the flower on the basic gray sticker sheet to do that. Then 
to that pebble stamp. To test if I'm going to stamp on stickers, I stamp on the sticker sheet, but just up there where the branding is to find the right ink for, um, for that particular sticker. And I use the Jenny Bolin inks in the end on this one. And so I also really wanted to follow that rule of if I added it to the top left, I also wanted to add it to the bottom right. So I went back to the Bella Boulevard Autumn sticker sheet and found one that would work, but I never could find a place that it would work in that corner without it being distracting or looking out of place. So in the end, I broke that rule. Here's my finished page. I added a little bit of mist around the edges to match the other pages in that album and added all the writing. There's plenty of space at the top and the bottom of the layout. So lots of themed products, but it doesn't look like an autumn page. It doesn't have kangaroos on it. Um, and you would never guess that one of those sticker sheets had jukeboxes on it. So your challenge this week is to get creative with your theme supplies, and you can take that in any direction you'd like. Join us next week for the continuing adventures of Glitter Girl and the ongoing mystery of the scrapbooker behind the mask at twopeasinabucket.com.